a brand which takes great pride in its reputation in supplying the best quality halal certified beef directly from the farm to the table. In today's episode, we will discuss how Sarah Beef aspires to be the number one trusted brand in halal meat production in Malaysia and how they introduced the first two-in-one butchery and dine-in premium outlet in Sarawak. Hello and welcome to Brand Pulse with me, Mariana, as your host. In today's episode, a brand synonymous with its reputation as a trusted supplier for the best quality and halal certified beef from the farm to the table. Today, we have Tuan Haji Abdul Hadi, the General Manager of Sarawak Economic Development Corporation and also the board member of PPAS Ternak together with Artino Arshad, the General Manager of PPAS Ternak. Welcome to the show, Tuan Haji and Artino. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us on the show. Pleased Welcome to, to Brand House. Okay, Pleased to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get started by perhaps sharing a little bit about, we know that PPAS Ternak was established uh, almost 38 years ago and uh, is the largest live cattle supplier in Sarawak. And with, you have your exclusive brand, which is Sara Beef, as the exclusive brand to promote the fresh beef. Can you walk us through the meat supply chain journey from the farm to the table? Thank you, Marina. Uh, I'm really proud to be here in this talk show. And, uh, you know, as we said, uh, PPS Tanak has been around for almost 40 years. Yeah. And in tandem with uh, PPS Tana, we also have this uh, Rosewood station, which has been around since 1982. And uh, this Rosewood station is our main source of supply of cattle. At the moment, we also have another uh, area called Camo Plain, which we bought only in 2019, which has uh, brought us into a combined ownership of about 1 million acres of land to rear our 40 over 1,000 uh, cattle in Northern Territory, Australia. And as you said, from farm to table, right? That's the farm. And we're bringing them over to Sarawak, uh, <coughs> to area called Karabungan in, in Miri. Miri. And also uh, now we have the abattoir in Siburan near Kuching. And we're going to have a holding yard there, which can hold about 800 cattle at any one time. So from there, the, the meat production will be derived from these live cattle that which are brought in from Australia on a uh, scheduled basis. And uh, as a result of that, we have a full range of meat products that we are now, as you said, to the table. Mm -hmm. We are bringing to our outlets and the one that we have behind us is the uh, Sarabi Premium Outlet, our Janama, our brand name, Sarabi. Mm -hmm. And the customers can get the best meat. Right. And as you know, the one that we have in uh, the Northern Territory, Australia, the farm o over an er area of about 1 million acres in total, is actually grass-fed uh, cattle. And right. grass-fed cattle, as you know, is highly prized item, you know, and the meat is of premium quality. Mm -hmm. And why waste? That's why I think the brainchild of our Tan chairman to have this uh, outlet, the premium mm -hmm. outlet we call it, and the first of its kind in Sarawak, and, well, I think that's it. It tells a story about farm-to-table uh, involvement of our cattle yes. uh, sector in SCDC right. under the PPS Tana. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let us talk a bit about the Siburan Halal Abattoir. I understand that it is actually the first in Sarawak to produce chilled meat and actually meat carcass in Sarawak. Yeah. What other types of services does the abattoir provide? Okay. Thank you, Mariana. Okay. Besides supply the beef to, to, to the public, to the retailers, we also uh, uh, supply. We also provide the specialties to the customer in terms of slaughter for the like, akikah and korban, especially because korban is coming uh, in in July. So customers start doing the booking at the moment. So, okay. so we give the facilities. We, we, do, we do the slaughter. Right, and in terms of uh, your tagline, is actually very clear. Think halal, buy Sarah beef. How do you position the brand actually? Well, as you know. Sarah Beef is a brand that has been around or synonymous to the emergence of PPS Tanak in the market, right? And I think the visionary leadership of our leaders, right, has brought about the Sarah Beef name, a household name in Sarawak, right? And I think uh, the fact that we have the abattoir now, 
and it's halal yeah. certified already. And uh, what uh, Artino has just mentioned with regard to other facilities that we provide is because of the capacity of the abattoir. And it's one of the biggest in Malaysia, you know, with uh, what, 100 cattle per day capacity that actually can provide the needs of the, you know, the peak uh, the uh, demand. demand during the uh, eight uh, other hearts, uh, uh, slaughtering, uh, sacrifice need, uh, uh, korban, yeah? Jadi, with that, I think uh, our yeah. uh, Sarah Beef Halal Tech yes. Line, right? So you actually, um, you know, comply to strict adherence yes. of the Halal certification. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, yeah. thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. We will now take a quick break and after the break, Tuan Haji and Atino will be sharing more about his latest venture, the first two-in-one dine-in experience and butchery right here in the heart of Kuching. Hello and welcome back to Brand Pals with me, Mariana. So today we have Tuan Haji Hadi, the GM of SEDC and also Artino with us. Thank you once again for joining us. Yeah. We are now right here in front of your butcher and dine-in concept store. Can you explain a little bit more about the concept? Yeah. Talking about the outlet, yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the customers who support us since we opened in March to, yeah, this year. And it was an overwhelming yeah. support, uh, demand, yeah. right? <laughs> The response is very good, uh, Alhamdulillah. Actually, the idea and the vision came from our Yang Berbahagia Tan Sui Chairman. Yeah. He's a very brilliant guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Tan Sui, our Tan Sui Chairman is a person who thinks always outside the box. Mm. And of course, uh, having traveled so much and has seen things uh, you know, in Europe and uh, in the US or in Japan or whatever. I think this is something that we actually, for the first time, having the experience of this kind of dining yeah. In Sarawak, and why not? You know, I mean, we have all the facilities that can provide this. Yeah. Atino is the yeah. expert in this, I think. <laughs> yes, maybe Atino, you can share with us what are some of the you know interesting or recommended products. Ah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, for this outlet, we divide it into two sections. One is on the butchering, and the other one is on the restaurant. So, for the butchering, we have all the cuts. For the whole kettle, we have all the cuts, and then from the all from whole from the whole cuts, we divide it into a, a few cuts. A few categories, which is a special cut and a normal cut, and then we also have a dry aged beef, which is still new in Sarawak. All right, you since you mentioned dry aged beef, uh, I understand that it's actually the first. You know, Sarawak beef is the first to produce dry aged beef in Sarawak. Yes. Can you explain a little bit more of what is dry aged beef? It's yeah. also something new to me. Yes. <laughs> okay, dry aged actually is very popular in Western country, and then in Semenanjung Malaysia also they just started, and then now we bring the dry aged business in Sarawak. This dry age, uh, the process is we preserve the beef uh, through one special cabinet or chiller for minimum 21 days. And then it can go up to two, three months or so. And it so must be then. fresh beef. Yeah. That's why with the, the abattoir in our possession, mm. the fresh beef comes from there. And it's not just fresh beef, as I, mm. I said earlier, it's actually grass-fed beef. You know, grass-fed grass cattle coming, coming from the grass-fed cattle, the beef is premium, you know. Then it's converted into this dry age. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's something that you, everybody correct, must look correct, forward yeah, to. Yeah. Even though the price is a bit, slow, uh, a bit higher, but customer once they try it, they will love it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They will um, love it. Because like, of the aromas, because of the tender, tenderness. Yeah, yeah. Tenderness. Yeah. So there's an intense, intense flavor, flavor to it. Right. 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 I, I, should, I should really try it. Yeah, yeah you should. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I tried for the first time, Marina. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, overseas, even though it's being offered to you, you I mean, as Muslims, we don't just simply eat, yeah. you know. But here, yeah. we can be assured that it's halal. Right, yeah. right. Talking about our products, mm. yeah, uh, we have uh, uh, two categories, uh, which is a uh, special cut and normal cut. For special cut, we have like tomahawk, which is uh, our consider our uh, signature best dish. Seller. Okay. Yeah, the best selling products. Yeah, and then we have t-bone, we have uh, 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 filet mignon, yeah. and then for the normal cut, we have like tenderloin, mm. we have uh, brisket, we have uh, skirt, this kind of thing. Yeah, mm. we have everything. Yeah. And I can add, you know, it depends on the size of the kettle. If the kettle is big, you know, the one tomahawk cut can be about half a kilo, you know, or can be more than a kilo, yeah. uh, more than half a kilo. Yes. Right. Uh, we've been eating almost half a kilo of meat in front of right. us, of course, with a, a, a subsection of the, yeah. the body part of it, but the rest is pure meat. Yeah. All right, I, I can't wait to try. Yeah, you must try. <laughs> yes, can, yes. can I talk about the concept uh, here? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Our concept here is a pig and grill. Yeah. 
where customer can choose whatever cut they want, mm -hmm. then we will cook the, uh, we will grill for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about um, like right now we are still battling COVID? Mm -hmm. uh, are yeah. there any type of uh, home delivery services oh, for yeah. those who want to avoid yeah. coming out mm -hmm. at yeah. the moment? Yeah. Actually, we treat this outlet as a center of distribution. Yeah. Besides, we are selling our products here. We also deliver to the customer, door to door services. Yeah. Uh, we actually started this uh, many months back, yeah, yeah. even uh, before COVID set in. Mm -hmm. We wanted to yeah. do uh, home delivery, yeah. online uh, ordering, yeah. and all that. And yeah. we started that. And you know, with COVID, it just accelerated the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we are prepared for it. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How about? Um, can we expect to see more of these two in one outlet, you know, outside of Kuching in the future? Oh yes. What's your expansion? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, we are working on one one uh, new setup in Miri. Yeah. Inshallah by by August. Yes. This year, yeah, already approved yeah. by our board. You know, <laughs> anyway. Marina, we just started this one less than three months, right? Mm -hmm. And we are already rolling out another outlet in Miri, and that's that shows how. Uh, popular this outlet, this kind of outlet is, and you know, Miri, where the the market that uh, that comes from Brunei, if the border starts to reopen, mm -hmm. will be a fantastic market. Yeah, it will and be not only that, demand. I think we're already eyeing Bintulu as well. Yes, yeah. and Bintulu with all the oil and gas, with all the expatriates there, you know, I yeah. think Correct. it'll be something that yeah. will probably be, yeah. you know, doing yeah. better than this, this yeah. outlet of ours. But we intend to roll out uh, in major. Uh, Major towns. places, yeah. Yeah. and maybe in Peninsular Malaysia as well, or maybe in Singapore, or maybe even in Indonesia as well. We don't know, but right. we have planned towards that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the next outlet will be opening in Miri. Miri, yes. That is for sure. Yeah. For sure, yes. We've we, we, been approved yes. by the board, so yeah. we are very confident about the market. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay. okay. We will now take a short break, and uh, if so, if you are in Kuching, whether it is to stock up your beef supply or just curious about the intense flavor of dry edge beef, oh, yeah. do come by Sarah Beef Premium Outlet right here in Kuching. Welcome back to Brand Pulse with me, Mariana. You are with Sarah Beef, Think Halal by Sarah Beef. Tuan Haji and Atino, recently we, Malaysia was actually roiled with the fake halal meat scandal. Did it somewhat affect Sarah Beef as a brand? Can you share with us? Yeah. Mariana, you know the, the fact about this uh, fake, uh, fake meat, meat. Uh, in uh, Sunadi, Malaysia? That was what? Just before COVID, right? Correct. Yes. And I just want to stress the difference between grass-fed uh, cattle compared to the grain fed cattle. The grain fed, you know, is actually being being confined to this eating place under the shade and they're hardly moving, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the grass fed cattle that we have in Northern Territory Australia, over almost a million acre of land that SCDC through its PPS Tana or through its Rosewood uh, company owned since 1982, has been stumping of a, a pride to SCDC and Sarawakian. Because this is the only place where we are actually having this uh, grass-fed meat freely roaming around in its natural environment and being brought over to Kuching, you know, to Sarawak. Not just Kuching, to Sarawak, to Bintulu, to Miri, and in the, our holding yards. And of course, being supplied to the local market for slaughtering, doing mm -hmm. festive season like uh, uh, Idil Adha. Yeah, yeah. And of course, now we have our abattoir, our own halal. modern abattoir, yeah. halal modern yes. abattoir, one of the biggest in Malaysia, right? Mm. Previously, we have our abattoirs, but it's not really that, mini, you know, correct, it's a mini one. Now, it's one of the biggest with 100 heads uh, per day capacity uh, for cattle sure. and with the addition of for another hundred for, yeah. for uh, sheep and, and yeah. other animals, right? Yeah. But that's, that's not it. People have been targeting at the uh, SCDC or for that matter, previous Tana. Why is the, the meat? different in price compared to the other meats being sold locally. Yeah. We're not saying that the other meat uh, sold locally are not halal, but what happened in Minister Malaysia recently has, I think, somewhat menyedarkan orang, you know, yeah. that, look, mm -hmm. what you've been buying, what you've been compromising with, yes. the, stat the integrity, the halal integrity status of the meat that has been imported from all over, you know, 
bit from India, come from I don't know Brazil. Brazil yeah. Yeah. Those things, and it, the price kept on making being being at a low level. Yeah. There must be something wrong. Mm. So it's proven, right? So mm. now you know what it has impacted us positively. People realize that by buying this premium meat, which are certified halal through our source because it's live cattle being brought in, right? And then being slaughtered at our halal abattoir. And the tagline of, you know, uh, buy Thing. halal things, are, uh, buy uh, sarabi, yes. think halal things, buy Thing sarabi. Mm. This tagline is something that we've been holding on to. And the system that we have put in place to assure customers that our meat are not just halal, but it's fresh and it's of premium quality, right? right. right. And you know what, our, our local butchers, right? Those who are probably doing a part-time business on this, uh, uh, slaughtering of uh, cattle every weekend. Yeah. Instead of ha having one cattle per weekend, they're doing two kettles per weekend now. Since that scandal, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not only that, uh, as you know, has been bombarded with uh, inquiries from Peninsular Malaysia, yeah, right? Yeah. Asking whether we can actually bring on board Sara beef uh, products mm -hmm. yeah. in their retail yeah. outlet. Right. Mm -hmm. So we see. So it gain it gains uh, customers' confidence. Gains, uh, yeah. Customers' confidence. Correct. And it brings yes. about an opportunity for us yes. to expand. Yes. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, we have to do our homework. Mm -hmm. We have to tidy up where uh, we are not really up to the mark in terms of our regular production. Correct. And Which brings me to the next question, actually. As the major distributor of fresh and chilled meat, mm -hmm. uh, what are the challenges faced to actually preserve and maintain the halal integrity of the product? Yeah. yeah I think this is what the, the, the customers want yeah. to know. You know, yeah. Marina, talking about being a major producer, this is not our claim, you know. Recently, in the papers, Indonesia is actually going into this uh, uh, ownership of farm uh, overseas, maybe in Australia as well. And they actually referred to SCDC. Setting the benchmark. As the leader, <laughs> one of the leaders in this uh, uh, industry, you know, this uh, livestock industry. Mm -hmm. And I think without having us claiming uh, that we are the leader, yeah. somebody else, an international powerhouse, mm -hmm. potentially powerhouse in this sector, if they want to come in, yes. has claimed that SCDC has led the sector, you know, especially in the Southeast Asian region. Yeah. Now, as a result of that, I think uh, we have great potential mm -hmm. uh, to grow in this sector. And we plan to do all the full range of products coming yeah. from our meat. Mm -hmm. And we are, you know, having discussion with uh, some very, very uh, knowledgeable person who is actually hands on yeah. this. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, it's too early to reveal his name, but he's a German and he is willing to work with us on producing these uh, products. To diversify. To diversify. The because by diversifying, uh, especially the idea of our Tansu chairman going to corn beef production, which of course is going to be a premium corn beef, not just any corn beef, you know, that's available in the market now. Yeah, yeah. We want to make sure that people also have that trust. Premium and trust. And yeah, yeah, premium yeah, trust yeah. and people, we want to give the people the best food. That's available, not just halal, but best in terms of quality, best in terms of taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that is actually already provided for in one of the, uh, our outlets here, one yeah. the outlet that we have here. And uh, as what Atino mentioned just now, the dry aged meat and yeah. premium meat that people are actually queuing up, mm. right from day one that we offered. Yes. 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 Yeah. One last question before we end: uh, What are some of the collaboration PPS Ternak has, you know, with uh, the ministry or other state agencies? in terms of empowering local cattle breeder mm -hmm. or cattle farmer in Sarawak? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, firstly, uh, we have always been uh, in collaboration with the uh, Ministry of Agriculture Sarawak, Manred, and, uh, and also the Department of Veterinary Sarawak. Yeah. And uh, we collaborate in the form of uh, what you said, the power scheme, where we provide uh, cheaper Cattle, breeder cattle for entrepreneurs to own you know, mm -hmm. uh, through the ministry's uh, scheme. And when they own this uh, breeder cattle, they, they have the ability to, you know, to, to breed them, to have uh, offsprings from this uh, breeder cattle. And in so doing, I think the government is actually targeting uh, a few hundred thousand, uh, what do you call that? Population. Population mm -hmm. of this uh, cattle, yeah. cattle mm -hmm. uh, bred locally from our source. And it depends how, maybe they have their own 
uh, grass plain area for them to yeah. you know to yeah. follow the same way that we we do in yeah. Australia. Mm -hmm. But here, of course, grass is in abundance, right? In Australia, mm -hmm. in some part of Northern Territory, the grass is not very in, not in abundance. We we we're challenged by that, but we have already acquired one place called Camo Plain, which actually sort of an insurance for that uh, original place that we have. You know, this is actually uh, a plain where it has plenty of water, plenty of grass. So it's like perfect combination for our source to mm -hmm. flourish. You know, we have about 40,000 uh, cattle heads any, at any one time, right? Yes. And this is being rolled into the market. And what our target is, if the local sector, a local through this power scheme, can bring about the population growth in our mm -hmm. local uh, uh, cattle production, mm -hmm. I think it will balance the, the pricing, you know, the local, because we're not stopping mm -hmm. people to buy yes. yeah. fresh meat from Lockley. And that's our, our, our what call it, our joint venture with the ministry mm -hmm. to, to make sure that the ministry can, through its scheme, provide the, the you know, fresh meat mm -hmm. uh, to be owned by locals, local, yes. local and to be enjoyed by all. Right. Yes, yes. One mm -hmm. thing that I want to stress on, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Marina, with regard to how do how do you maintain your uh, halal integrity right? right right we have in line with the government vision of uh, into, uh, what, what do you call it uh, digital, digital, digital transformation economy. digital economy mm -hmm. right we ha we are engaging with a uh, uh, software provider mm -hmm. a system provider that can actually do the tracing of all the products that we produce from our halal abattoir mm -hmm. all the way to whatever products that we produce in terms of its halal status, in terms of its freshness, in mm. terms of its production time, yeah. Yeah. and in terms of whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think this system is very hard to beat in terms of people wanting to fix our products and all that. Mm -hmm. And we are working with them. Inshallah, this will be rolling out very, very soon. Yeah. And I think that makes us being one of probably the only entity that has the whole ecosystem. ecosystem, yes. ecosystem. Not only in yeah. terms of, as what you said, but right from the farm to table kind of concept, but to assure that whatever that we are producing from our source, halal, remain halal all yes. the way to the table. I totally agree, Tuan Haji. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time, Tuan Haji and Atino. Yeah. And we really hope that Sarah Beef brand continue to grow, not only as a trusted household brand in Malaysia, but also a global exporter of halal meat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank our government yeah. in particular for giving us full support for our development. Correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you for joining thank us. You, Marina. Thank, thank you, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maria. This is the brand story of Sarah Beef, a brand that takes pride in its reputation to provide the best quality and halal certified beef from the farm to the table. Think halal by Sarah Beef. That's it for today on Brand Pulse. Thank you for watching us and do follow us at TVS TV MY for other exciting programs only on TVS.